Nathan Judah. I'm joined by Albion reporter Matt Wilson and Matt Mayer, who's going to look at things from a Villa point of view. Uh, both Matts. There's a little bit of a squeeze as well, so let's see if we can uh, get things going. Uh, Matt Wilson, first of all. Matt, obviously a disappointing game and uh, a bit of a shocker from Albion's point of view, really. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Yeah, they, they weren't good today. I mean, no shots on target tells its own story. Uh, they look flat. Uh, they look like a team that just played five games in 15 days, which is what they have. Um, they were very lucky not to concede a penalty mm -hmm. in the first half when Olsen uh, just did in on Ayu. And, you know, I think they'll, I think Pius will be happy with a point, to be honest, because uh, even though Villa are bottom and obviously have their own worries this season, um, they, they, Albion didn't look like scoring uh, at all, really. Yeah, Matt, as you said, Villa are bottom, but they were the better side, weren't they, on the day? They were, but I think I, I agree with Matt there. I think in terms of performance, Remy Gard will probably be the, would be the happier manager in terms of result than Tony Pulis because Villa need wins and, and this this will have to go down as a, a huge missed opportunity. Uh, Albion really not at the races for, for large parts of the game, but, but Villa were unable to find a way through and, and you know we've been uh, we've been honest that was better than, than Villa have been for, for much of this season. But yeah. they still still you know only two shots on target themselves. Um, you know just hugely frustrating. It's coming. It's coming together finally, I yeah. think, for under Remy Gard, but it, it's, it's just going to be, I think, a little too late. And perhaps today was the confirmation that they're just not going to get out of this. The Villa fans leaving disappointed yeah. because maybe they should have won the game with, with oh, that yeah, penalty. Oh yeah, disappointed. I think I think I don't think anybody's going to be particularly uh, overjoyed after this game. No. Uh, Albion because you know they, they, I think they wanted to you know drive a final nail into uh, or one of the final nails into Villa's coffin. Uh, and, and we're unable to. And, and Villa because you know it's it's all about the wins now and. Uh, Draws really mm. aren't good enough, no matter how you know how better the performance might have been compared to earlier in the season. Tony Pulis obviously very disappointed with the way that, that Albion attacked and, and going forward today. And it's frustrating, isn't it, to watch really at times? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Sessegnon was showed a bit of a bright spark in the first half, but he, yeah. you know he rarely created much. Um, McLean put a couple of decent balls into the box, but the problem really lies up front. I mean, yeah, you know, uh, no shots and target tells the same story. Rondon. Um, although we scored against Manchester City midweek, um, it didn't really look in <laughs> any danger of scoring today. Uh, and each be and, and Berahino when they came on didn't look like they were going to score. I mean, Berahino uh, in, in injury time pulled out of a 50 50 with Jolly and Lescott, and the crowd didn't like that at no. all. And um, I think, you know, there's a couple of poor touches from him as well. I mean, it doesn't look like a 20 million pound player at all at the moment. And, and Tony, Tony Pulis in, in the post match press conference um, said that Simon Rondra might him two weeks off. Says his ties had blood tests as well this week about tiredness. It's just not coming together. He probably needs a second season, doesn't he, for him to, to fit into this team? I think he should. I think he deserves a second season. Yeah, I mean, he, he's not like Brown and Day. He, his performances are there. He is. He does chase the ball down. He does work hard, and he is. He does link up, play well. He just has. Or he can't find the back of the net at the moment. His, his finishing has been poor for for months. Um, but there are you no know, signs that he could turn into uh, a good striker and could score the goals that he has done elsewhere in his career. Um, I think Albion fans will give him a second chance, give him a second season, as it were. But uh, yeah, he needs to he needs to you know buck up his ideas soon. Signs that he can improve. Matt signs for Villa. Five games unbeaten now. Yeah, I think the defence is the big thing for Villa. I think Julian Lescott was probably man of the match today, mm -hmm. uh, and they're, it's coming together there at the back for them. Uh, Mika Richards finally at right back, where a lot of people feel he should have been all season. Uh, and Yuri Zakoria and Lescott, quite a nice uh, central defensive partnership. Clearly the best one they've got. Lescott. Maybe you know not with the pace that he once had, but but Okore has got the pace and and they combine quite well. And and Alex Isoko really has been a, a better left back. Um, you know, though I thought he was probably the weak link in the defence today. If there was mm -hmm. one, um, he's been a better left back than Villa have had uh, for, for for much of the season. So it's it's there. They're, they're more solid. But again, it's the final third. And and if they can bring somebody, if they can bring in a striker over this next week then they will have an outside chance. But if they don't, then I, I just don't see how they're going to score the goals or pick up the points that they need between now and the end of the season. And it, it must be difficult from Villa's point of view to attract players with, with the current situation they're in. Well, yeah, entirely. And, and Remy Gard has said that uh, on, on more than one occasion. Uh, he's pretty much repeated it. Um, you know, he's not that keen to talk about transfers after the game, but as, as good as repeated it now. Um, a win today may have, have, have changed things. Um, you know, but as it is, there's still nine points adrift. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and this was a, you know, this was a winnable game. You know, this was, uh, you know, when, te when the opposing teams, it doesn't matter it's a derby, it doesn't matter it's Albion, when opposing teams aren't on the game, uh, Villa have got to take, uh, have got to take advantage, and, and they couldn't do that.
about eight or nine days to go before before the end of the transfer window. Can we see Albion um, making some some big purchases or, or indeed selling some some, well, some big boys? The only way they're going to buy anyone is if they sell other players first. And uh, you know the big one obviously is where the side of Berahino is going to go. Um, I think Pochettino has come out and and you know given the impression that he's not going to sign him, he's not going to um, spend the money that Jeremy Peace wants for him. Um, so you know that leaves it sort of down to whether Newcastle or Chelsea come in with a big offer that Albion can't refuse. But it's looking more and more likely that he might not go and he might have to stay until the, till the summer. Yeah. Um, and if that's the situation, then I, I I don't see Albion making any you know big purchases at all. Um, on one note, Anders Lindegaard has just gone on loan to Preston. Right. Um, but that's just to get rid of a third choice goalkeeper. Doesn't free up any spots in the squad. Um, I don't. I can't see him bringing anyone in really. Thank you very much, James. Really appreciate it. Uh, you might have to wait a while for this one on Match of the Day tonight, I'm afraid. For all the post-match reaction, make sure you log on to expressandstar.com.